Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace a rack and pinion in a 2008 Honda CRV. This one's all wheel drive. Uh, doesn't, I don't think it really makes a difference whether it's two wheel drive or four wheel drive, but a little tricky to do it. Uh, and, you know, got a little tip, a, couple, uh, a few little tips for you. So, let's get into it. Let me show you how to do it. Step one is going to be to center your steering wheel. And then what I like to do is take the seat belt and I like to run it through the, the steering wheel and then clip it in. In most cars, it'll fasten. This one here, I had to move the seat forward about six inches to get this, the, the seat belts uh, in. <clears throat> then we're, we're going to go under the dash here to disconnect the steering shaft. Always look up your procedure. PT cruisers, things like that, you have to go under the dash to dis disconnect the steering shaft. And once you've got the subframe disconnected or things like that, it's very difficult to get under the dash. So here we got the steering shaft and there's a plastic cover that goes over it in the beginning. And there's one stud and a clip that hold the, the plastic cover and that's going to come off. And then we're going to disconnect this steering shaft. There's the plastic cover. The steering shaft just has one bolt that goes through it. I like to take a paint marker and I mark the steering shaft to the, to the steering coupler. That way I know about where it's gonna go so I could compare. Also, when you take the rack out, sometimes the tie rods get bumped. And if, if you're taking it out and the tie rods did get bumped, then your line won't be in the right spot. So I use that just as a reference. So I know the rack is exactly where it was in the car as it is now versus when it was in the car. It would really suck to take it out and compare it and it be in the wrong spot. I've had that happen before and it took me a while to realize that it got bumped taken out. So this is why I take that precautionary measure. Okay, once you lift it up, we're gonna pull the wheels off. Take those off and uh, the next step is gonna be to disconnect the tie rods. Got the Observer Tools headlamp brightening this thing up so I can work. Uh, we're going to take off the the uh, the cotter pins and then we're going to loosen up the nut for the inner tie rod and outer tie rod and then I, then we're going to take the nut off for the outer tie rod. Then I like to take a hammer and just hit the knuckle or whatever uh, where the tie rod goes into and usually about two or three big hits with a hard hammer uh, and you can pop it loose and it'll pop. You'll see it pop up. Um, there's tools to disconnect them but a big hammer and I could usually pop them loose pretty good. Uh, we're going to do the same to the other side. And then you're going to unthread your tie rods. You're going to unthread your outer tie rod and then count your turns. I like to write it down because a lot of times I end up having to work on other jobs and I'm not going to come back and remember that the left side was 15 and the right side was 16. So I write it down. For breaking the nut loose that secures the inner tie rod to the outer tie rod, I like to use a 12 inch adjustable wrench. This is an Olsa Tools. It's a good quality. It doesn't change once you set it. And uh, you can use this for alignments as well. That's what I like to use. The next step is a precautionary measure. Anytime I do struts, axles, racks, anything, I take wheel speed sensors and I disconnect them from the car and I tuck them up on top of the strut because one little tiny pull of the sensor, it'll stretch the wires and then you'll have to replace it and the boss is usually not too happy because they're really expensive and they're very difficult to repair. Uh, so I like to just tuck it up out of the way and next thing we're going to do is disconnect the sway bar, the end links on both sides and I'm going to pull it out and flip it to the other side of the wheel speed sensor wires because the sway bar is going to flip upside down when we do this job to get the rack out. We're going to do that on both sides. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to get in here and disconnect the fluid lines. The one on the left is the pressure line. I uh, usually use a crow's foot to get that out with a, a long extension and a wobble. Then we're going to have the uh, return line. Now, in some cases, you can just loosen the clamp, break the line loose, and unthread the fitting. That's the best way to do it. In this one, you can't. There's not room. So I actually had to pull the line off and then change the fitting on the rack once it was on the ground. If you can leave the fitting in the line, it's best because that line, when it's disturbed, it'll leak a lot of times and then you have to replace it. And it's a return line so it just sucks air and makes noise. 
All right, while we're here, we're gonna disconnect both of these 12 millimeter bolts for the sway bar frame mount and go ahead and take your brackets off and do that on both sides because the sway bar is gonna flip all over the place. For power steering pressure lines, it's best to use a crow's foot flare nut. I don't have one that's 21 millimeter. This one works really well. It's really hard to break loose, but then it unthreads really easy. Put that on a wobble extension, let's go. All right, on the passenger side, there's a line assembly that the, the pressure line assembly that comes across the rack. You can see it right there. The screwdriver's pointing to it. Uh, there's a bolt right there. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, you'll have to take that bolt out. Uh, and then also for the return line, which is right there, there's a plastic clip you need to pop loose. While the vehicle is down low from up top, you can get to these bolts and clips from up top and it's a lot easier to disconnect them beforehand. Uh, then also you're going to disconnect these two oxygen sensor connectors. Uh, you don't have to mark them. They only go one way. Uh, they're, 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 the green goes to green and the other one goes to the other. So you can't get them mixed up so you don't have to mark them. Okay, so on the pressure line, there's another bolt here that's just closer to the driver's side, right on the rack, bolting the, the pressure line up. And uh, then there's a clip for the return line. You got to pop that clip so you can move the return line. And then right above there is going to be the, the clamp I was showing you for the return line. You got to loosen that clamp up. And from the back side, from underneath, it's easiest to get to it. You can put your left hand through the wheel and hold the wrench. And with an easy red, you can, uh, you can loosen up that clamp, get that bolt loosened up. And there's also a heat shield that goes over the, uh, the rack right here, to goes under the rack to to protect it from the exhaust. I'll show you those bolts in a minute, there's two. Okay, there's another bolt right here for the power steering line. Uh, it's up top, it's right there. As I said a minute ago, it is a lot easier to get these bolts for the all the power steering lines from up top before you lift it up. So disconnect all those lines and pop all the clips, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so the rack is mounted to a bracket and on the rack is two 17, 17 millimeter bolts and they have a big washer. Uh, the washer can come off, so keep track of it. There's two of them, one on the front and one on the back on both sides. You need to disconnect those, uh, those bolts so that way we can lift up the rack and unbolt the bracket. Now there's a bracket on both sides. Uh, there's three bolts and they secure the bracket. We're gonna lift up the rack and slip the bracket out so we can maneuver the rack out of the vehicle. Once you've disconnected the rack and taken the brackets out, you're going to slide the rack forward and you're going to disconnect this boot right here. This is what secures the inside of the vehicle from the outside so air doesn't uh, come through the firewall. You're going to turn the rack towards the back so the steering shaft is sticking down at like a four o'clock position. You can see the sway bar is twisted underneath there. It's kind of difficult to get it out as you have to just maneuver it and maneuver the sway bar. Make sure you don't bump the tie rods because then it will twist the shaft and then your orientation will be off when you put the when you compare the two racks. All right, so I forgot to show you this, the passenger side bracket for the rack. Uh, you have to unbolt that as well. It's got three bolts. Uh, that one, it doesn't come out. I left it in. You just have to move it out of the way to slip the rack out. And then there's that heat shield above. That one doesn't come out. It just stays and it just rotates out of the way. And then the sway bar you have to maneuver. Now the rack, when you when you get it down um, on this one here, I was talking about that fitting for the return line. I couldn't take it out, and so now I'm just going to transfer it to the new rack. Uh, make sure that you transfer any brackets. Uh, that one's for the return line. Transfer them to your new rack. Now one last thing on a rack and pinion. A lot of times rack and pinions are stored on their ends. And therefore, the tie rods get pushed, which uns which, which basically uh, takes the rack and it uncenters it. And so what I do is I get a big vice grips and I clamp it on where it's at a certain point. And I turn the vice grips in one direction, I count my turns. And then I turn it in the other direction, I count my turns. Believe it or not, racks come and a lot of times they are not centered. And if you just put it in, not centered, I had an 85 Dotson. And I did a rack, and it had a rack like this where there was no orientation. You could put the steering shaft in any position, and it was off. And I had to drop the rack 
to loosen the steering shaft, to maneuver it, to center it. And it's a lot of work to have to do that. It's better just to center it while it's on the ground, slip your shaft on, and then you can adjust your tie rods to get everything adjusted at that point. But if it's that far off, you can't adjust the tie rods to fix it. You have to take the rack back out, and it sucks. So check it on the ground. All right, this is what I was showing you. This is the view from up top from under the hood. You can get to a lot of stuff from here. Uh, you can actually get to the power steering pressure line right there. You can pop the clip loose. You can come to this side, disconnect that bolt right there for the pressure line. Uh, you can disconnect, you can pop the clips loose for the return line. You could even break the line loose for the pressure line. You can get to the bolts right there for the rack and, uh, and loosen those up from here. You also want to disconnect the power steering pressure sensor. That's easier just to disconnect it because the line's going to move all over the place. So before you start this job, lift up the hood and break every bolt loose that you can from here. Don't take the bolts for the rack out until you've got the bracket loose. But at least you can break them loose from here. It's a lot easier to do it now. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you've never replaced a rack in a, in a 08 CRV, hopefully this helps you figure out how to do it. Also kind of shows you some pointers on how to get it in and out, and uh, just some little tips and tricks. Uh, one little tip that I, that I forgot to tell you is, anytime you replace a rack and pinion, pull on the, on the bellows boots on the end of the inner tie rods, pull your clamps off, and stick a little uh, a pick in there, and spray some WD-40, and then put your clamp back on. And a lot of times when you have that WD-40 in there, when you do your alignment, your bellows boots will slide on your inner tie rods. And that way you don't have to worry about the boots twisting up. Uh, I forgot to do that on this one. And, uh, and so I had to untwist it. And then actually I did another rack right after that in a, uh, in a Tundra. And, uh, and those boots were twisting as well. And that's what made me remember it. So two racks in a row, I mean, that never happens. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it makes you feel confident in doing this job. Uh, also, I, I hope some of the tips that I shared with you um, aid in, in your, in your uh, repair on this vehicle. So hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you're definitely gonna wanna see. Also check me out on Instagram at Nuts and Bolts with Tone for my daily life as a mechanic. Show you little tips and tricks, show you cool tools, uh, show you tools that maybe you don't want. Uh, you know, I have some stuff that, you know, I bought that uh, maybe isn't the greatest buy or I found a, a cheaper version that works better. So I share all that stuff on Instagram, uh, usually pretty daily. So anyways, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.